Alright, so you're wandering through the internet. Entertainment levels are low. You both are about to die of boredom. What do you want to do? I look for a cool new podcast! Yeah, and I assist. Alright, give me an investigation check. Oh yeah, and roll with advantage. Last time on Roll With Advantage. So the party was traveling towards the coast when the conch shell started making all sorts of fuss. Kinian, Manette, and Tenuvial investigated the shell and, quite an accident, discovered that it's a teleportation device. They got sent off to an unknown location that seemed to be below the sea. After exploring around for a while, it seemed like this location might have something to do with giants as everything was quite large. Kinian even found a cloak that belonged to a giant. The party traveled towards the sound of sweet music. Kinian, wearing his newly found cloak, fit him quite poorly, when the giants suddenly noticed Kinian. So you're just kind of walking walking along the edge of the, the uh, by the wall, just like you normally would, like you yeah. own the place. And you hear like this chair, like push out from one of the tables. This loud booming voice calls out. You guys can see a frost giant standing up and pointing towards Kinian. And he says, that orc, he has my cloak. The the is he uh, in common? No, no. <laughs> I don't know what he said. Uh, the jazz stops and the singing stops abruptly, and everybody just kind of turns and looks at you. I turn and look at them, and walk into the room. <laughs> walk down the corridor. Uh huh. Okay. You turn down. They that don't corridor. see you guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not focused on uh, us. Uh, you turn down the corridor like you own the place. And uh, uh, there are two guards uh, standing at the end of the corridor in front of these uh, shipwreck wooden doors. And uh, they stand in front of the doors, putting their spears crossed in front of you. And a couple of giants run towards you, uh, storm giant guards, and uh, yell at you. You don't know what they say. They're just shouting. I wait. you. <laughs> Speak they... the English. <laughs> Yeah, they, uh, they shout at you some more, and they step forward uh, towards you, kind of aggressively. I take it they don't speak common? Uh, they don't seem to. What are you guys doing, uh, Manette and Tin? Are you hiding in the doorway? I'm kind of hiding a little bit right now, just because if things get ugly, then having the element of surprise could be useful. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, so I need stealth checks from you two, please. Slash, if he gets captured, then we can try to save him. And I will give you guys advantage, uh, because oh, Kinian has uh, taken aggro, basically. <laughs> has caused a distraction for you. 21. 18. 18? Okay. So, everybody has turned towards the corridor with Kinian in it. They are walking towards you uh, aggressively. What, what would you like to do? I pull the conch out of my bag and raise it up and point at it. <laughs> nice dude. Playing a game of nice. charades almost. And uh and they look they look at you and then at the conch and the one that was aggressively moving towards you uh, uh relaxes his posture almost uh and reaches his hand out for the conch. I smile and give it to him. Uh he takes it and uh he puts out his very large giant hand uh, towards yours, almost like uh, follow me, like a child holding holding a parent's hand, like he wants you to hold his hand. I grab his pinky. Okay, <laughs> and and he just starts uh, dragging you. Uh, he he doesn't realize his steps are a little longer than yours, so you have to like hop uh, skipping behind yeah, him. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. He is a size larger than you, so. Uh, yeah, so you see Kinian dragged back into this room uh, with two guards, and back into uh, the room we are at. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. And uh, Kinian's got kind of this 
happy smile on his face almost uh, with with the cloak and just kind of vaulting in and the, the storm giant uh, guard brings you up to the frost giant and the frost giant is barking at you uh, just like yelling in giant at you and like tugs on your cloak uh, and like puts it up to your face and is yelling at you uh, and what do you do? <laughs> you you like you take it off and you like hold it up for for the giant to take. Uh, yeah, the the giant takes it and he like puts it around him and it fits perfect. Like it is it is made for this. And I'm guy. like <laughs> doing like the okay symbol. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, we cool, we cool. <laughs> yeah, and the giant like like rubs his chest to like flatten the scales on it and uh, just checking to make sure nothing is uh, damaged. And he, he like, tightens it across his chest, and he looks upward, uh, not meeting your gaze, and uh, he snuffs, and he sits down. He looks angry at you, um, but he definitely gets the sense that you don't understand, and so he uh, he's kind of giving you leeway, it seems. Like he's a toddler. He got well, his cloak yeah. back. He's mad that you took it, but okay that you gave it back. Yeah. I'm is, surprised this hasn't broken out into bloodshed. Is yet. there any drinking <laughs> conches? They took yours. That that's the that's the conch that you had. I walk over toward the fountain. Okay. And I'm like motioning <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I want to drink. The guard uh comes over to you and puts his hand on your shoulder and uh he's he like uh looks at you and shakes his head. Uh the storm giant that was singing uh walks up to you, and in common, she says, Wow, hello, orc. Hi. You are awfully large for your size. I, uh, I found some potions. <laughs> Very clever. So, what can we do for you? I blew a, into a thing, one of these shells, and now I'm here. How did you come across one of these shells? Pray tell. I found it on the, the side of a river. There was a flooding. She says, interesting. Let me tell you what. We can, we can house you, if you'd like, and send you home along your way in the morning. Or we can, we can dispose of you now, if you'd like. And she, she, uh, she looks at the guards, and the one, the one guard is like cracking his knuckles. I like to party. <laughs> I like to move it, move it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an instrument like that either. She says, uh, yes, this is quite an instrument. So real quick before I, I have my guards remove you down to the smaller quarters, why do you have business here? Or is it simply that you were blowing into a magical conch on a whim? If only she Who would knew Canyon. <laughs> Who would do that? It was blinking and beeping, and I was drinking, and I started drinking to the 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 beeping, and and then the beeping was going to my drinking. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I I must have missed my flagon and tried to drink from the shell. Deception. She can probably smell the alcohol. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So. With with advantage. Fourteen. Fourteen. She uh, she eyes you. She says, uh, "I believe you to some degree. I believe you are not telling us the full truth. So my guards will take you down to our guest quarters, where you are a guest, and you will be removed in the morning." Please enjoy our accompaniments. Goodbye. And she just like shoes you away and the the guards like start taking you towards the the turret. Hey. I ate all the food already. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so oh my gosh. what are you guys doing, Manette and Tim? I was just about to interrupt to say I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know if it's better to be like, hey, we're also here. It's just the three of us. Considering We'd like to his go. lies, no, it's not better for us to do that because. <laughs> Well, I guess we could say we we followed him. We belong the contract. You're looking for your, your simple orc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never go full retard. Oh, there you are, Kenyan. <laughs> We've been looking for you. I don't know what good that's actually going yeah. to accomplish for us, though, because um, I don't know what it is that we're here for. Yeah, I. They don't see us right now. Kinian hasn't mentioned us. He seems to be handling things pretty well. We. I'm trying to. Just very, very surprising. Very impressed. We can attempt to say that we're trying to meet with Sarissa. We knew her that she was a nice lady, Mm -hmm. and we know that theoretically she's here. Mm -hmm. But why? I mean, because we found we found the conch, like, and the conch just says, you know, all the giant lords are summoned. Mm-hmm. Why would we be wanting to talk to her? Uh, we don't have to be here for that reason. As as you guys are quick like uh, discussing like before the before the guard gets to the turret, and you guys are like, oh, what are we gonna do? Like, well, mm-hmm. you know, back and forth. Uh, Kitty, and I need you to give me a perception check. I want to party. Uh, and Tim could give me one too. Oh. Okay. Nine. Uh, twenty-one. Nice. Holy shit! So what you see is down the the mediocre hallway. Uh, you see a very large purple storm giant walk in at the moment that they're uh, leading Kinian towards you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you see her. She's got like. She's got this headdress, this purple, this gorgeous purple hair. Uh, she's got like this scar going from from uh, one ear across her nose and face uh, to the other ear. The scar goes up to the bridge of her nose and then back down. And she's got like this dragon skull headdress with uh, like intertwined in her hair. You remember her. This is the giant that turned into the dragon that attacked you all. At the temple, yay! And uh, yay. and she sees she sees Kinian, and he's Whoa. just you know unaware, just oblivious to this. And and imagine it like this: like she walks into uh, the doorway, she sees Kinian, and she just like quick turns about face and walks out of the room uh, quickly. Ooh, she doesn't want to be seen. Uh, she doesn't seem to have noticed you. Uh, she definitely saw Kinian though. So what do you want to do? Um, <laughs> with my really nice perception roll, what was I able to gather from the one giantess that had talked to Kenyon? Do I have a feeling that, like, how do I think if we were to show ourselves, what's my feeling on how her mood would be? I, I think that'd be more of an insight roll. If you want to, okay. yeah. If you want to do that real quick, just kind of, kind of gauge the situation. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. Do you want to try a two minute? Not yeah, mine as well. Am I still in the party room? Yeah. Yeah. This is all happening like boom, boom, boom. Uh, Tin, you think that if you were to show yourself, it might change things slightly, uh, depending on what you're gonna. S- what you're gonna say, you get the feeling that she feels that she is above all, all small creatures, just by the way she's talked to Kinian. Okay. Uh, it it definitely has this feeling of demeaning and that uh, you might have a tough time convincing her or or like discussing anything with her. She, she is more about just removing you from this place that you do not belong, mm-hmm. right? At the same time, this place is built with quarters for small people. Right, yeah. Which is intriguing to me. I know, I'm very intrigued by that. Oh my gosh, I really don't know what to do because... So do you tell Manette what you see? Let's let's resolve that yeah, first. Yeah, I tell him what okay. I see. So remember, they're walking they're walking towards you, so, so what do you tell him, like... You see this, and you gauge, you get a temperature for what's going on. Mm-hmm. What are you telling that right now? Something along the lines of, if we show ourselves 
I feel like we're she's not gonna want to listen to us because we're not giant sized. Do you tell him about the about the the one giant? Oh, he didn't see that either. No. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Yeah. No. And I I kind of like whisper like, hey, that giant that turned into a dragon. She came in, but then she saw a canyon and she left. Part of me kind of wants to go follow her, but. Part of me feels like that would be a horrible idea since she almost killed all of us. So, Minette, what do you want to do? And a few others. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're also short. Uh, a few party uh, members. Yeah. Yeah, and, a, and one giant. <laughs> I want to try and meet Sarissa. Okay. I, I, okay. She's obviously, like, she thinks she's some grand high queen for the, the giants now. But we've heard that she's a nice person, so could be. So does Minette just kind of take a step out to the the doorway and and kind of yeah. announce himself? I'm I'm gonna walk out and say, Kinian, there you are. <laughs> well, and I I don't know what Minette is doing, but I know that if we're not to make it feel like we're deceiving people, I have to walk right out with him so that there's no more surprises after him. Okay. So I'm like right behind him, even though I have no idea where he's going with this. Okay. All right. Kenyon, what are you, what have you gotten up to? I made friends and uh, <laughs> I, don't like I friends. fumble in my pack and I pull out a pipe and I pack a pipe okay. and I light a pipe. Uh, she, when, when you, when you pack and light that pipe, the giantess says, uh, excuse me, first off, first off, first off, please do not smoke in here. It affects my singing. Second, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> and she, she says, who are you? So, this is our friend, and he sort of disappeared on us. So we tried to follow him and figure out where he went. Because we know he's a little drunk and... He gets himself in trouble on occasion. And by occasion, I mean day. I'm a big orc! So ho hopefully he hasn't been rude to you, to you all. I apologize if he has. Like, I'm just kind of segueing into the whole, like, oh, I'm going to pretend I'm a concerned mother type yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I point at the frost giant. I wore that cloak! <laughs> she says, uh, oh, yes, it it looks to me that you have your hands full with this one. Yes, we do. Is there a Sarissa around here? <sighs> yes. That is my sister. Um, can we talk to her? She's unavailable right now. Um, but let me tell you this. How about this? Why don't we put you down in the guest waiting quarters? And as soon as she is ready, we will come get you. That's a very gracious offer. I think that's fantastic. Thank you so much. And what is your name so I can let her know who is calling? My name is Minette. I'm Tanuvial. I've Minette. got a spear! <laughs> That's Kenny and Yes. Noted. And, and what is what is your name? My name is Marina. And this like sheepish Oh god, that's that's funny. The <laughs> white the white storm giant <laughs> in the back. Who is just kind of disappeared into the background. Uh, she is um, standing there, and her sister turns and points at uh, the one in the back. She says, this is my sister, Nim. Now, please follow our guards, and uh, like I said, we will be with you when Sarissa is ready. Feel free to enjoy what compliments we have down downstairs. I ate all that. Oh, God. Okay. Our guards will make sure that you have enough compliments to feed all of you. Again, you are very gracious, Marina. And then I walk up to Kenyon, and even though I am right now much smaller than him, I grab him by the arm to motion for us to start walking t with the guards to get out of here I take, while okay. things are good. I take like three or four steps. I stop. I turn really slowly. 
Okay. And smile and wave and then keep walking. <laughs> she like she waves at you like Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Like, Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. And uh and you guys hit the stairs and you hear Marina say I am very sorry for the interruption. We will begin again shortly. And the music starts playing again, but there's no singing over top of it. You hear uh, very large doors open and then shut in the background as you're making your way down these very nice staircase. What do you guys discuss while you're waiting? Are the guards still with us? No, oh. they they have closed the door, and uh, they are nowhere to be seen. Uh, you're inside the room. Well, I turn to Kenny and say, you know, you you did a fantastic job playing up your drunkenness, because part of me is hoping that he's not quite as drunk as he was showing in there, and that it was just. I don't know that wine was pretty good. It it is actually very good wine. <laughs> <laughs> So, currently it's been 10 minutes have passed, so I think I think you guys would have the feeling that you're probably going to be waiting here a while. Mm-hmm. So like, what what's going through your characters' minds? What are, are you trying to come up with a, a couple of plans? Like, if shit hits the fan, like, I mean, Tim, Tim probably has told everybody now that yeah. about, the, about the giant, and so that might be something to plan for. Like, why are they taking so long? Well, I think, first of all, considering we asked to see Sarissa, we should figure that shit out first in case she does come quickly. I'm thinking we can go the angle of we had read the message on the conch about this whole all the giant lords being summoned, and we were wanting to ask what, like, why so many giants are suddenly attacking and you know can we come to like a peace agreement or a ceasefire i will give you inspiration for that thought okay. so that is the very good thought um i'm not gonna dig it out i forgot to grab it but just mark somehow that you have inspiration the little folk are interested in peace because the giants are so powerful causing <laughs> chaos for us and you know care what the giants do, we just want them to kind of stop killing all the yeah. small folk. Yeah, yeah. Stop doing what they're currently doing and just go back to how it used to be. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be that. Mm-hmm. If, if the whole like, if shit's blowing up here because people didn't, the giants didn't like how the status quo was. I'm okay with the status quo changing mm-hmm. as long as the little folk become. Yeah, not yeah, the not the collateral thing. damage. Yeah. Yep. Do I have to hear music playing? Uh, yeah, a faint, faint, uh, music. I hear that the dragon is here. Mm-hmm. And Kinnian leaves the room. Kinnian. So you open the door. Mm-hmm. And when you do, uh, two spears cross in front of you, and the storm giant guards are standing there, uh, guarding the doorway, not allowing you to leave. Hey, I'd like to register a complaint. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they look down at you unknowing. They they just look down at you, like sideways, side-eyed, just paying you no mind other than making sure that you're not leaving the room. I clink, clink on my breastplate. Yep. And <clears throat> point, I'm pointing at the dragon insignia. I'm pointing and I'm like, point. dragon. And pointing upstairs. One of the guards, like, hits the other one on the shoulder, and they start, like, saying stuff, and they're like... <laughs> do I? They just start laughing. What do they say? Uh, they say... <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> they say... <laughs> Puny human trying to talk yeah, to yeah. us. Or I mean, puny orc, sorry. <laughs> Short people are funny. What you got, Alan? <laughs> they say, what's shiny and green and smelly all over? And the other one just kind of like laughs and the, the first says, uh, 
<laughs> Orcs. <laughs> and they just kind of laugh. It was a really bad joke. But whatever! Hey, or I they tried. Work, or they would find bad jokes funny. Yes. Kenyon, get, get back here. So far, we avoid pissing them all off. I put my hand on the storm giant's leg. Okay. And push. You, like, push the leg. He uh, smacks your hand away. And uh, uh, he turns towards the door. And he is now upset. I throw my hands up like this, like, and I'm like, like frustrated, doing frustrated, like I'm okay. making, making dragon noises, like, rah, bleh. oh my god! I'm trying to communicate with this guy. I'm, I'm like pulling my top knot, like there is a dragon upstairs. Kenyon, what are you doing? I I walk over to Kenny and Can you- like pick him up and. Pull them back into the room. <laughs> so, oh, so you walk over. The oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> so you walk over and it's you like regular. drag him by mm-hmm. like the highest you can reach on him is mid shin right now, yep. and you're just like dragging his leg. Like, come on. And I just turned to the guards and I said, "No, I'm sorry. They don't know it, but they can tell from my voice." And yeah. then I just go to like. Close the doors. <laughs> yeah, so you like bow deeply and you're like, yeah. sorry, sorry, and you like what? close yeah. the door. <laughs> Kenyon, we can't afford to start a fight in here. There are way too many giants. I don't want to fight a giant. I'm aware of that. But like, we just tried to push one who is actively guarding our room. I wasn't going to hurt him. Yeah, but he doesn't know that. He does not know that. All he knows is that we suddenly appeared here. And so now he's holding us down here until he's told what else to do. I bury my axe into the floor with one strike. And you crack the very nice uh, uh, purple polished uh, uh, floor. Oh gosh. And I go, lay down. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so you like hum, 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 and and like you walk over and you push two beds together. Yeah. And they're pretty big beds as it is. Uh uh you push two of them together and you like lay across them to try and and, and they bend. They're like Wah! and and they like cave a little bit uh under his weight. I, I pull the axe out of the ground put it over by Kinian, and then try and cast Mend on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, Does it work? The, yeah, the cracks start, like, sealing up. It takes a few castings. Okay. Um, but, yeah. So we don't have to, like, awkwardly move a table on top of it or something. <laughs> yeah, put some newspaper over top of it. We just stand right on it for when they come in, like... <laughs> oh, oh, that crack? Oh, that was, like, that when we got here. <laughs> We, you know, we still, we, we thought you guys were very accommodating, you know, very yeah, fantastic yeah. experience. We're not going to hold it against the food you. food was delicious. You yeah. know, when we, leave, crack. when we leave that review on Yelp, we won't even mention it. Mm-hmm. But. So, Kenyan, are you napping or are you just resting? You, you're just you're laying there, rest. like, trying to keep yourself calm in this situation. I've calmed myself okay. and, and my chest looks better. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, I could cast calm emotion if I needed to. <laughs> That's He's taking your short rest. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh and there's definitely time for for that here. Mm-hmm. Um and obviously uh this is this is kind of a short rest <clears throat> period. It's it's now been 15 20 minutes uh longer. You guys have been waiting a half hour or so and still nobody has come haven't come to kill us yet. Woo-hoo! That's that's right. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? I'm fiddle with my bow tie. Otherwise, is uh, um, otherwise are you just kind of on auto, just waiting around, yeah. maybe playing cards, something yeah, like that to pass the time? Yeah, because really, I mean, if the dragon comes to attack us, if the giant turns into a dragon, mm-hmm. then we just gotta see what situation is and react to it. Okay. While this short rest is going on, uh, it's been a couple of hours now. Something that's been like kind of calling to you, Minette, is um, uh, just kind of like you've been pondering the situation a little bit, and it seems odd to you 
uh, or at least it's weighing heavy on your mind, why the fuck would a dragon be here with giants? They're mortal enemies. Oh, okay. Not, and, not even frenemies. No. Can we get a refresher on yes. what? You remember that Imrith uh, came and uh, attacked you. She mm-hmm. turned into a blue dragon, an ancient blue dragon. After the uh, battle, uh, you guys rode away with uh, Epido, and that's where you found out that Imrith is a blue uh, dragon. evil dragon, an evil okay. blue dragon, and that that's also where you found out about the giant dragon wars and uh, about them hating each other. Uh, you know uh, from Epido and from what Keo uh, talks about that that dragons are able to take take forms of different creatures and they actually have preference to, to certain creatures and uh, that Epido explained that Imrith must be taking a, a storm giant form. Okay. So we don't know anything about her motivations at the moment. No. Okay. So she probably doesn't want to cause a scene here either because she's actually a dragon and the giants probably hate her. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, so okay. we actually would have that leverage if she were to confront us. That's true. We could sure. reveal we're fine. who she is. We're fine. And hopefully, That's you know. That's why I was trying to get out. I was trying to leave the room. Mm-hmm. Yes, but doing so in a way that pisses off the guards will only make it easier for her attention to be drawn to us. Okay. So, a, another hour goes by. It's been three hours. Uh, a knock comes to the door. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Kinian has shrunken now. And I have got my great axe at the the ready. It's on my back. And okay. I'm, I've, uh, I've been preparing. Okay. Yeah. For whetstone for and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. I quickly cast mend on my... <laughs> You're yeah. good. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just in case. Come uh, in. Just, just quick. Make sure that the cracks are all gone. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then, and then mend on your gun. Yep. <laughs> we'll wax on, wax off. Yep. <laughs> and uh, 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 a knock at the door comes. And it's kind of them to knock, and they're. Yeah. Unpo- I mean, I guess they probably can't fit through the door. I right. Open the door. Yeah. You open the door, and there stands uh, Marina. She says, "Queen Sarissa shall see you now." Uh, you notice the guards are gone. Uh, do you guys follow her? Yes. Yes. Okay. You guys uh, follow her into the chamber with the large pool of water. Um, and when you uh, enter this chamber, you see you see three other giants in this room. Uh, the fire giant, the cloud giant, and the frost giant. And the frost giant's wearing its cloak. And uh, they're all standing there uh, in front of the turret. They kind of like crack their necks and they crack their uh, fists. The frost giant points to you, you three. It's comprehend and, languages. Yep, yep. You've got comp- comprehend languages. I wave. Um, <laughs> Kinium waves, and uh, and the frost giant says, uh, "You small folk have made a grave mistake this day." Is it in common or? Uh, no, it is okay. in giant. Uh, Minette can understand it. It is at that time the giants run at you. Rage. To attack. So everybody roll initiative, please. Awesome. Please. It is 19. 11. 10. Uh, I want, um, I want... Tin to roll a insight check, please. One. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Awesome. That makes it a ten. Oh. oh. Okay. All right. Uh, they go on three. Very good. Uh, with ten, Tin, mm-hmm. you can tell that uh, uh, other than the frost giant, the other giants don't really want to be here, and that. Uh, you might be able to persuade them to to uh, stand down. Except that they don't speak giant. <laughs> That's a really bad mistake on our part. Yeah. Uh-huh. I can mentioned I that to him. downtime days to it. learn that? Yeah. No, I can't Oh, you understand. can only understand it. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, 
Tim, what would you like to do? Oh, That's also much. with your insight, you uh, intuit that it probably wouldn't be wise to kill a princess. Yeah, no. So, yeah. Did Marina like walk over to the others before they started to attack us, or is she like she's still behind leading you. us? She's behind. Or er, no, she is in front of you. Yes. Sorry. What does she look like? She's doing. Uh, in this moment, she is like walking through the other giants, not stopping them. So she s- sort of seems like she's. You get the you know, feeling she kind of set this up, like. Like stop these little folk. Okay. Giants <laughs> aren't weak to light, I probably No. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. What you got? I guess I will just shout out we're not here to fight, we wanna make peace. And hold my action until something gets within ten feet of me. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, when you when you shout that, uh, you see the shoulders of of Marina just kind of lift in a chuckle. It is Manette's turn. Actually, sorry, what? I lied. Um, I'm going to cast. Res- you yeah, get a I'm buff. gonna I'm gonna cast bless on Kinian. Okay. Yeah, you get it on everyone. You get no. Oh yeah, three of my nice. choice. Okay. Okay, everybody's blessed. All right, okay. Manette. D4. And it counts for saving throws as well. I'm gonna shoot the frost giant. Okay. Was eighteen hit. An eighteen. Oh wait. Twenty-two. Yes, that hits. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. That's twenty-four damage. Next is. You reload. I, I so, yes, I reload. I see f- four giants are charging us. Yeah, three, well, no, three, no, are three giant, three giants are charging you. One is walking away towards the stairs to go up. Marina is yeah, walking Marina away. Is and it's walking a away. fire, a frost, and what? Cloud. Cloud. But the frost is the one that looks angriest. Yeah, the frost is the one that you stole the, the cloak from. Well, stole. Yeah. Huh. Well, no, stole. stole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give back, but stole. Yeah. <laughs> I can't understand what they're saying. Mm-hmm. I know that they're pissed and they're coming at me. Mm-hmm. I'd like to move 20 feet ahead. Okay. And slam my axe down into the ground. Okay. As hard as possible. And uh, let out a war cry. Okay. And an attempt to intimidate? Yes. Okay. Yeah, go for it. First, I want a strength check, please. When you slam this axe into the ground, give me a strength check. And don't forget to add a d4 to it. Yeah, it's basically an attack. How is oh, a, nice. how's a 24 plus seven oh. do you? Holy shit. 31. Yeah, so oh. you, you run up and you slam this axe, and the axe goes all the way, halfway, all the way up to where the hilt meets the the uh, head, and uh, you bury it deep, the cracks shatter across this very nice tile. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then you just let out this guttural yell. Go ahead and roll your intimidation with advantage. Maybe we won't have to fight them. Yeah, with a people. I am proficient in intimidation. 23. 23, nice. Uh, with that, with that uh, yell, you can see that the fire giant has like stopped running forward uh, and is uh, cautioned against this whole thing. Uh, you think that the fire giant was probably the least, the least convinced out of all of these. Uh, and you also see uh, Marina turn around and you see fear in her face. Uh, the frost giant still powers forward, um, and so does the uh, cloud giant. So I draw my axe out of the ground. Yep, yep, and, and it I'm, comes out easy. And I'm holding it at the ready. Yep. All right. It is their turn. The uh, fire giant first uh, says in giant, 
She says, uh, maybe, maybe we should rethink this. This isn't right, guys. This, this doesn't feel right. The other two, uh, bear down on Kinian. Uh, first the Frost Giant. Uh, that is going to hit at a, uh, 27. Oh, you went at reckless, yeah. So 9 plus 9 is 18. Oh. Does 18 hit you? Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, two hits uh, with a great axe from the Frost Giant. Um, you take... Ooh, that is 21 plus 6. is 27 plus 6 is 33. 33? 32. Yeah. 32. That's both hits combined? That is one, sorry. Oh, thir- 32? Oh, goody. Yep. Okay. 32. Uh, and then the second one is 9, 19, plus 6 is 20, 25. Okay. All right. Uh, next up is the uh, Cloud Giant. Cloud Giant comes in. Uh, wielding his morning star. I'm gonna use warding flare on his first attack. Okay. Hopefully that will uh, first attack. Uh, what does warding flare do? Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Very good. Uh, first attack is at a 15. Miss. Miss. Uh, second attack. Second attack is at a uh, 28. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that is going to be twenty piercing damage. Yeah. Ten. Your turn. Uh, Marina has turned back towards the uh, towards the stairs and is like is moving quickly now, making it to the stairs and working. Her way okay. Up. Guiding bolt on the cross giant. Okay. That is ranged spell attack. Okay. 14 plus 7 is 21 to hit. 21 hits. My dice are on fire. <laughs> okay, so 6 and 6 is 12 and 5 is 17 damage. 17 in total? Yep, and uh, it's radiant. Next. Is it, is it glowing? Is it glowing? What no. spell do you use? Uh, uh guiding bolt. Ah. So it's radiant damage. So it's, oh, actually, it's no, glowing. no, you're right. Oh, you're right. So Next you've attack got roll gives nice. advantage. That's why I'm saying. Yeah. Thanks to the mystical dim light. I was already prepping for your. Mm. Oh, I already have this. Yeah, dude. I'm prepared for this. <laughs> Are you rolling your extra dice? Yes. Okay. I'm okay. rolling all of the dice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this feels a lot like old school, like 3.5, where, where people are just rolling fists full of dice. Are those in tens? Holy shit. Um. 46 damage. To the Frost Giant? Yeah. Wait, 46. Did, was that just okay. your cannon? Yeah. Damn. I crit with it. Oh, Thanks yeah, you crit. for that Guiding Bolt. Guiding Bolt. Yeah. That's what I was like. Yeah. Nice. Uh, he Six looks rough. Months. Yeah, he better. Yeah, you you just <laughs> blow apart, like, like, a, like his side or whatever, and he's like, he's got his hand on his ribs, and uh, he's like, rrr, rrr, you will pay for that. Uh, next is Kenyon. I know he can't understand me. Yeah. But I oh. I start I reload and give a thumbs up to the fire giant. Yeah. <laughs> He'll still understand your tone. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I look very angry at him mm-hmm. and basically menacingly start smiling. Okay. And swing my my axe. Okay. Recklessly attacking him. Okay. With your D4. Ooh, that's not so good. Mm. That's not so good at all. I'm guessing a uh, frost giant, right? Yeah. Okay. What you got? 14. 14 just barely misses. <sighs> all right. Here we go again. Oh, 
Oh. Thirty-eight. Oh. Thirty points of damage. <laughs> One die. <laughs> Thirty points of damage. Was All right, on the frost tall? giant. Uh, next, so the frost giant moves past Kenyon and attacks uh, Minette. I hit him. Okay. With power attack. He's stupid walking past you. <laughs> Quick question. I, I can't. I don't get a reckless on a reaction. I don't think so. No. Were those reckless attacks, by the way? Yes, sir. Okay. That's going to hit all day long. Okay. Or 26 points of damage. And it is. So he moves past you, and you you bury your axe deep right where uh, Minette has shot him through his side, and it hits something vital. And uh, and he lets out this this yelp like, Ugh! and uh, and out out of his mouth comes just a gush of blood, and he drops to his knees and he falls to the side, holding holding where your axe uh, had landed. You seem to have uh, removed him from combat. <laughs> Very nice. Got him in the chilies. Yes. Because <laughs> he's cold. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ouch. Uh, all right. The cloud giant. The puns they heard. Yes. Uh, so the cloud giant, uh, seeing this, reevaluates his life choices. Uh, nope. Oh. Uh, he. Give me, let me do another intimidation, sir. Yeah, go for it. That's definitely an intimidating thing, especially yeah. for people who are wavering. I. Tr- yeah, yeah. I think I think the frost giant himself was the only one here and that I didn't really hit. wanted to be in this. On that's one. Well, that's what you had told me with my insight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yep. Just go ahead. Intimidation. Oh, uh, with advantage. I mean, yes. I'd like to get experience from killing a bunch of giants. But I'd also like to get out of here. Uh, it's only a thirteen. I feel like if a we 13? win, if we win the battle, we might not win the war. So. Six and it wasn't as cool as my nat twenty and, no. uh, and it, a four. <laughs> uh, the cloud giant, the cloud giant says, uh, "Okay, okay, we don't need to do this." And he goes over and he starts like putting pressure on the the frost giant's uh, wounds. He says, "Helendel, stay with me, Helendel." I'll and, go up and cure wounds. Well, cure wounds I can just do spare the dying. Well, that's if he's downed. Is he downed? Yeah, I mean, he's... Death saving? Yeah, he's death saving. Oh, yeah. Spare the dying, I think, is less useful than actually healing. Okay. Okay. I mean, spare the dying, yeah, he'd he'd be stable, but... Mm -hmm. Well, and I suppose if you heal him and then he still attacks us, we could just down him right again. Yeah. 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 That's right. Okay. He heals for eight points of damage. Or nine. nine. Okay. His wounds knit together... Uh, and he's no longer, like, coughing up blood. And it's obvious that we were the ones that healed him. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I would think Minette kind of makes a show of it. And the giants are kind of regrouping. And the fire giant says to you, he says, or she says, Marina said that you guys were, were assassins. It seemed a little off, but, I mean... You're not right. I mean, we can't. We can't let you continue in this keep. Is she speaking in giant? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are she says. Still? She says, nod, nod like this, it, as a yes, and you know, shake your head as a no. And when she asks, you're not assassins. I'm like, yeah. You nod yes. Smile. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, we're not. Yes, we're not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm playing with the floor. Yeah. That I smashed. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like examining like my holy. handiwork. Yeah, you're like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, she she simplifies and she says, are you good? Yes. Uh, she says, shall we take you to the queen? Yes. You nod yes. She helps the other giants uh, take the frost or the other giant take mm-hmm. the frost giant into the larger sized room and they they uh, bandage his wounds more, uh, lay him down to rest. Uh, she comes back out and she says, something is 
wrong here, I can tell now. Follow me. And uh, and she starts going up the stairs at a slower pace so you guys can keep up. I, I keep my axe out. Okay. They've lost yeah. my trust at yeah. this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a little the, on edge. You're, you're, but it also alert. makes sense that we're on edge because yeah. we were just attacked. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you are... You follow the the duchess, the fire giant duchess. And she's walking up the up the stairs, and as she is, she's quickly explaining what's going on, kind of. Uh, she says, uh, you know, after King Hikaton uh, disappeared, and after his wife died, things have been very crazy. And then the ordning shattered. We giants that were here, we are trying to figure out what's going on. What What is going to happen? What is Sarissa going to do now with the ordning being shattered? After saying that, she she reaches the top of the stairs. Two quick questions. A minute, are you kind of giving us quick translations of everything? Mm-hmm. Okay. So and did she say Hikaton's dead? He's disappeared. Or disappeared. And okay. his wife is dead. Okay. Question for DM. I don't remember what the ordinance is. The ordning. 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 It is the pecking order uh, uh, put together by their the giant god NM. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's saying that uh, storm giants rule over all giants. Uh, like a caste system. In yeah, a, way? a caste system. Yep. Isn't and it then like a like a magical sort of contract that basically it that it's happened. a religious contract set, basically set in stone and all giants know when the ordning was cast out basically what it meant was the highest tiered cloud giant which is uh, directly underneath a storm giant is never above the peasant storm giant uh, so yeah. the lowest storm giant is always above the most ruling cloud giant and okay. and that goes down the tiers and so when Hikatan <clears throat> disappeared and then his wife died so it went to their child Sarissa <clears throat> the, all this quick succession of like power pe- yeah power the power vacuum that's why the ordinance shattered no it it just so happened to be right around the same time okay. uh so the ordinance shattered uh timeline wise the ordinance shattered and then directly after that Queen Neri died and then not too long after that, King Hikatan died. Okay. And then, and then the power shifted to his his uh, youngest daughter. Died or disappeared? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Disappeared. He has not died. I've made that yeah, very yeah. clear. I, I yeah. misspoke. Uh, so, okay. yes. That makes, that makes a lot yep. of sense. I'm good now. Thank yep. you. And so that's, that's why these, she's explaining that's why they're here, is because of all this turbulence and power, and the turbulence of what's going on with the ordning, like there's good sections of giants that are concerned that with the ordning being gone, they're gonna be plunged into chaos, which is what you're seeing. It's happening all over yeah. Faerun right now. So, yeah. So. And Kinian is listening, understanding part of what Minette's telling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's still kind of like brandishing his ax and yeah, looking unhappy. And I think I think a lot of what I just said would be something that Kenny and relay, or I'm sorry, uh, Minette relays, like just kind of mm-hmm. recapping like what's going on and like explaining the importance mainly for Kenny to you know to keep throwing things at the wall and keep, seeing well, what keep sticks. it at the forefront. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so she gets to the top of the stairs. And the uh, jazz room is empty. It is absolutely empty. There is nobody around. Uh, The giantess uh, leads you down to the gaudy uh, corridor uh, and you walk by these these relief carvings uh, and at the end of this corridor are are six storm giant guards lining the walls with their spears crossed. Uh, So three, three barriers. And uh, the fire giant, she says to them uh, in giant, let us through. These folks do not mean harm. And then there's a pause and nothing happens. And she says, what is going on here? I said, let us through. Uh, And the doors open uh, at the end of the corridor, uh, these shipwreck doors and in the doorway is Marina. Wow, 
It's Imrath in the center, flanked by Merna and Nim. And Imrath has kind of this... You get this feeling of surrogate mother that she's kind of taken these two uh, younger giants under her wings, and she says, These three shall not pass! From behind Imrath, you hear a tentative voice, one of a female, kind of squeaking out, saying, Now, Imrath, let them into the chamber. We shall hear what they have to say. I am sure we have enough enough guards to take on these assassins. I shall see my would-be killers and question them before we dispose of them. And Imrith looks you all like dead in the eyes. Mm-hmm. Each one of you, and she just snuffs and steps to the side and the the two other princesses uh, kind of like kick their hair back and and very like hump like <laughs> and and like move out of the way. They are very upset that they have to listen not only to orders of their youngest sister, uh, but they also uh, do not like that they are not getting their way. Sarissa is the youngest. Sarissa seems to be the youngest. Interesting. So all of these barriers lift open. And uh, you start following this fire giant into this uh, throne room. And uh, you see at the far end of the room is a uh, young uh, a young giantess, uh, storm giant, who has uh, very purple flowing hair, uh, uh, purpley blue skin, um, much younger than Marina or Nim. Marina being the oldest looking, Nim looking second, and then Sarissa being the youngest. She is kind of, uh, she's sitting in this throne and she visibly has weight on her shoulders. Like she is, she is holding the mantle of power and her physique is showing it. Like hunched shoulders, um, uh, she, she's still learning how to cope with this power, right? Uh, with, with all of this, uh, uh, is it an actual mantle? No, no, it's more it's more a metaphorical sure. mantle of power. And so she is she is uh, leaning back with her her uh, posture very poor uh, and she is leaning on this throne of bones. This throne floats in the air slightly uh, about 15 feet off the ground, which is but a step for a storm giant. And uh, uh, this throne is made of dragon bones. Manette, give me a arcana check, please. Was she speaking in giant stone? I just want to keep uh, yes. that. Yes. Uh, uh, I, would, I would say um, what she was speaking was common. What Sarissa was speaking oh, was common. Okay, so um, we understood her part and yes. her calling yep. us assassins. Yes. I holster my axe. 18. So, you you recognize this throne as the legendary Worm Skull Throne. This throne you have read about many times over as a dwarven artifact that has moved through time uh, from ruler to ruler. It was last uh, lost at sea, in the trackless sea, uh, during a... Um, while it was being shipped to a dwarven king. This throne is, it also has a scepter that accompanies it, and it was made uh, supposedly directly after the giant dragon uh, war. Uh, That's about all you know of it. Basically, like, you don't know what it does, but you know that this is a big deal. A really big deal. You see around uh, Sarissa's neck, is a uh, a very large nautilus shell. It is yellow and or orange and white, and it is on a necklace. And then she also has like this scepter that she's holding. So you enter the room, and uh, when you do, uh, Sarissa motions towards one of the to the right of you, basically behind the door. She motions 
and a large storm giant, an older storm giant, walks out. He kind of, like, puts his hand up on Imra's shoulder and almost, like, clenches it and then walks walks by Imrith and walks towards the the throne and stands next to uh, Sarissa. Uh, she says, in common, now, what are assassins doing here? Are you the same assassins that killed my mother? We are not assassins. Your Highness. One second. Pers- uh, persuasion. Twenty-three. She she leans back with like a shock, and and she looks at you, and she looks at Imrith, and she says, "Marina, you told me these were assassins. What is the meaning of this? What is going on here?" And she she yells to the guards outside. She says, "Guards!" Shut the doors immediately. And the doors close. And she says, bar them. Guards on both sides. You hear, you hear like this. She says, now, no one shall leave this room until I know what is going on. Do I have the impression that she is waiting for Amrith or Marina to answer? She is waiting for an explanation from anybody, I think. Okay. It's more of... The queen, the storm queen, has yep. demanded an answer, and she is hoping for an answer. Yeah, I just yeah. wasn't yep, sure. Yep, yep. Body language and yep, all that. Yep, you're reading um, it, right? So I just take a slight step forward and say, your, your Highness, we're not here as assassins. We are here in peace. We're, we're here to speak with you, um, and hopefully with your wisdom, find a way to end the conflict that has been happening across Faerun. I know of no assassination. I, I don't know what's going on with that, but I guarantee that we are not here to cause any harm. I don't know about that. I stomp on his foot. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you see his Kenyan's mouth opening up, you just stomp on it. She, he's drunk. Don't listen to a single word he says. She raises her eyebrow at what just happened with Kenyan and Manette. And she looks back at you, and she says, Then why is it that you have come here? Is it purely to find some way to bring peace? Yes. I... This is where I wish my father was here. He was so much better at doing this. I I have... I have worked on this for for months. I'm still trying to find an answer to that. If only I could find my father or his body and the the storm giant uh, male that is standing next to Sarissa puts his hand on her hand and she says, it is all right, child. We will find your father. And she says, thank you. Thank you, Uther. Rubbing his hand, says, uh, you've, you're a very good aunt, uncle. Imrith steps forward and takes a position on the other side of Sarissa. And she says, uh, my queen, now, what should we do with these small folk? They should not be here. They should, they're trying to instigate something that they have no knowledge of. They clearly do not understand the ramifications of what is going on. They should not be here. We know you! I stomp on his foot again. <laughs> and yes, she we... shoots daggers at you. And and when she does, her eyes, they fleck oh. to, to the uh, slitted dragon eyes and back. And she kind of snarls at you. I think you were at the the jazz thing earlier. Was was that where we saw her? She called me a fool, and she says, uh, "Well, yes, I I would call you a fool, Orc. You have stumbled into a den of giants, 
a stronghold deep beneath the sea. Only to find out how you can help? With quotes. And she says, Explain to me how three small folk are going to help a problem that is so far beyond you. A, a problem that has been created by our god Anem. We're not saying that we're here to fix everything. Certainly, as you have said, we don't know everything that is going on in the Giant's Realm, so we would not presume that us outsiders could come and fix all that. At the same time, whatever the full situation is, it is having an impact on Faerun, and so we're here to see if there's any assistance we can offer you. Any small way that we can help even one part of, of your issue. Of your problem. And I think Sarissa pipes up at this point and she says, Now, Imrith, these small folk clearly have skin in the game. I'm sure, like the little one has said, their towns are being destroyed. Now, wouldn't you come and try to do something if our stronghold was being destroyed by some larger force? You need to think about this. And Imra says, they have no business here. They should not be here. I shall. Well, that's that's for Sarissa to decide. Do not be de deceived. She is a worm. <laughs> is, is Kideon trying to, like, edge around the nets? I'm, like, I'm like dodging stomps. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her fly. And I think, I think at that point, uh, Sarissa, <laughs> Sarissa says... Um, what do you mean fly? She, and and she and uh, Imrith kind of looks at you like, yes. What do you mean fly? Say the wrong thing and I'll cut you. <laughs> <laughs> She's a dragon. I need you to make a persuasion check at disadvantage because this is this is a very ridiculous Sweet. claim. Yes, but. Can I assist? Um, Come on, bro. How guys. would you like to assist? He wants me to blow my roll. <laughs> how would you like to assist? I'm going to cast Guidance on Kenyon because he is right next to me, so I can just like pat him on the back and cast Guidance. Okay. All right. So you get a D4 added. I don't know oh. how I would assist. One second. I don't know how I would assist. Okay. It's a 10. Which isn't terrible. It's not bad. It's not bad. So Ressa <clears throat> says, Now, that is a very ridiculous claim. What evidence would you have to back up something like that? You, you realize this is what makes us not want to trust you, small folk. Why, why, would, why would a dragon, our most hated enemy, want to step into our stronghold. That makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not able to answer that myself. I'm equally as baffled. Do you know someone here that can cast a Zone of Truth spell? If not, I can cast that. Or True Seeing. Or, or True Seeing. We, we can... Surely they have spell casters here. Yeah, I mean... Um, they, they don't, actually. So, uh, they're... We... Well, I'm, says, like, uh, I'm just doing it in a way of like yeah, offering yeah. them yep, first, yep, you yep. know. She says, uh, no, we we don't have any clerics or wizards among us. Um But I think I think you're I think sure. I'm Rith. I'm Rith. You'll be subject to a zone of truth, shall you not? I'm Rith says, Yeah. I I have nothing to hide. Well, and I guess at the beginning of my offering that, I started out by telling Queen <laughs> Sarissa that my name is Tanuvial and I am a humble servant <clears throat> of Lathander. Um, so, kind of like, hey, I'm a yeah. cleric. She says, not to be demeaning, little one, but this is very clear from your garb, and you've just got, like, 
<laughs> you basically shout cleric, like yeah. <laughs> the Thander's number one fan. I'm just, I'm just, you know, wanting, just really putting things on thick to. Mm-hmm. So yeah, magic zone that guards against deception in a 15 foot radius sphere. Creatures entering the spell must make a charisma saving throw on a failed save. They cannot speak a deliberate lie. And I know whether they succeed or fail on their saving throw. Uh, They are aware of the spell and can avoid answering questions to which they would normally respond with a lie. They can be evasive as long as their answer remains within the boundaries of truth. So I cast Zone of Truth. Okay. I walk into it. (laughs) Oh gosh. What was the save she needs to do? Charisma. And what is your spell save? Uh, 17? 17. Yeah, 17. She walks in, uh, and you said that you would know? Yes. It says that I know whether she succeeds or fails. She succeeds. Dang it. Uh, She walks in, and she looks like she walks into this, like, Lathander uh, emblem that is on the ground with Mm -hmm. radiant light flowing from the ground. And she walks in, and she kind of, like, shudders and looks at... Uh, Queen Sarissa, she says, my queen, what shall I answer? And Sarissa says, well, the little ones are the ones calling you out. So I would think that they would be the ones to ask the questions. Let us see how this goes. What questions do you little ones have to ask? I can think of an easy one. What? The ball is in your court. Okay, so she succeeded. So does that mean she... And yes. Lies. Yeah, she can lie. Mm-hmm. That's what she wants. <sighs> but I walked in. I like this. <laughs> did okay. you did you choose to fail? Because you can choose to fail. I failed. Okay. Okay. So I have to tell the truth. Kenyon, have you seen this creature next to you before today? Yes. I guess to establish that you are under the spell because. She seems to be of great power, and I'm not sure if the Zone of Truth is fully working on her. Please tell us your most embarrassing memory. (laughs) Please, no. (laughs) You can just say, like, I said a memory from my childhood or something. You don't have to make specifics, but... Because I'm really trying to prove that... No, this I got put on the fucking spot tonight. <laughs> Kenya. You your most embarrassing moment, please. You asked for this by walking into that zone of truth. Uh, well, I think I saw my brother being made. <laughs> and I kept watching. Oh, no! <laughs> and... And, uh, uh, and then you got cars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Sarissa, she uh, sits back and and she like eyes with Uther and Uther eyes with her <laughs> and Uther like shakes his head like disapproving like <laughs> and uh, she says, yes, that shall do as proof, I guess. Um, okay. Yes. My okay. apologies. I didn't realize that would be quite the answer, but... <laughs> you did ask for it. I, I, I'm aware. I just... You get... I'm gonna give you inspiration, by the way. That, <laughs> solid. Solid. Have you seen this creature before you in a different form? Yeah. She called me a fool. I was just trying to squeeze through a... Porculus. Porcupine? I was trying to squeeze through a gate. And I was stuck. Did she reveal that she was a dragon when you had encountered her previously? She breathed lightning on me. And what did she look like in her dragon form? She's blue. Big. At this moment, she darts. She, like, jumps out of the circle, and she says, This is ridiculous! Sarissa's like, Calm down, calm down, I'm I'm Rith. This does not necessarily mean and she says no you fool 
This is ridiculous. You fools have fallen for all my tricks. And she uh, turns into this ancient blue dragon. And when she does, she says, the giants shall engage with the dragons in war once more, and you shall fall. Your race is in disarray. We shall be victorious. And she teleports away. Does anybody have dispel magic? Nah. Uh, the, uh, there is a reaction. It, it's not dispel magic. It's counter spell. Oh, yeah, counter, counter spell. spell. Sorry, no, no we, okay. none of us do. Okay. I just, it is a reaction, so I want you to give it ample time. We would need a bard. Yeah. Or a or, wizard. Or a wizard. Uh, with I spell. have it <laughs> as a spell, but not prepared for today. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so, Sarissa looks around. Uh, she says, I, I can't believe this. I, she is, she fooled us all. And Marina and Nim both look at each other and they look towards Sarissa and they say, she fooled everyone. And, and everybody is, it, it's real awkward right now. Uh, and so Marina and Nim were kind of under. It range. seems maybe so. Dragons could be persuasive. Yeah, yeah. Um, Prisma uh, like to the nines. Yeah. Uther Uther looks towards uh, Sarissa and says, "We we must double our efforts to find your father. We need to have leadership here. We need to hunt this dragon and and get rid of at least give some sort of fight back. The war might not start today, but maybe we can deal some blow to the." Ancient dragons. I'm still in the L, right? Yeah. So, I just want to make this clear that there are other dragons that might not want to go to war with you. I don't know. I don't remember all the details of the dragon giant war, but uh, we're friends with a gold dragon, and he seems to want to fix whatever your guys' issue is to save the small folk and does not seem interested in going to war with you. So maybe a counter attack against the dragons is not the way to go about this. At least we need to take this dragon out. Imrith that's, must die. That's totally fine. We're we just we just don't I we brought this to your attention because as I said we are here, we want to help you as we can. And the last thing we would want is to create an entire new war. It so, seems to me that... She's with... Imran? Emrith. 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 Yes. Uh, is probably behind your father's disappearance. That gives us some information to go on. They may have taken him, and we can help you in trying to find King Hector. Because as non-giants, it would be easier for us to And I interject. Enter. We heard he's on the something sea. We what? heard rumors. What, what sea? The trackless sea? That is a very large sea, but... That's our most recent information. I mean, if he's on sea, he must be by boat. Is that correct? I I would think so. How else would you hold a storm giant? Not in the water, that's for sure. I can't lift one. Uh, Sarissa, she, she climbs down off of her throne. When she does, uh, there... <sighs> Something I didn't mention is in in this room is a uh, pool of water, and it seems to be a emergency escape, uh, kind of like the pool of water that you saw. Um, as she gets down from this this throne, the nautilus shell around her neck starts to glow a little bit, and there is a spinning that happens in this uh, in this pool of water. And Sarissa, very serious and almost angry, uh, comes over to you. 
to you three, and she she kneels down and she says, "Does this help with anything? This is this is a token found with my mother." And she she hands you a wooden like a wooden coin. It's a poker chip, one that you recognize from golden the, goose. the golden goose. I that is familiar. You saw a lot of poker chips up close. Yes, I did. What should we do next? I I think we need to find my father. And Uther says from behind her, he says, We need to strike back immediately before the dragon has made defenses. I'm thinking personally that we should try to find King Hikaton. I'm with you, Sarissa says. Not because your highness is, you, you are doing what appears to be a great job ruling, but I think that with his wisdom and blah, 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 I can't speak today, but. Um, <laughs> when, she, when you say that, she goes, do not be disillusioned. I want to remove this mantle of power. I never asked for this. I do not want it. I understand. I just don't put down your your abilities either. Like don't don't that lie. There's a better way to say that. But anyways, I understand um, what you're saying, and it is very nice. You're very smart. You listen to me. Thank you. But yes, it sounds like finding your father would be a good action. He would probably be of great aid in trying to negotiate or help you with the full gravity of what you giants are facing. I walk up to Uther and say, wait for me. I want revenge. If you folks are going to find Hikaton, we shall wait. We shall wait two ten days. And if you cannot find him by then, the assault will start. Please, if if it comes down close, we need to come up with some meeting place because we will look for where Imrith, where her hold is, but I doubt that you will know where to go after that. What what should we do? And he looks to Sarissa and he says, is there something we can do with these teleportation conches? I was just about to ask if... Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she says, now, there is something that we can do, uh, at least with the conches. If someone attunes to them, they can they can teleport a group of people at once, not one by one. I would highly suggest that one of your party attunes to this this conch that you guys somehow have. But we gave it away. No, we still have it back on their ship. Oh. Because you're not a metal wise, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. attuned, so no, it never came with you. Because you, yeah, we blew it and then it dropped. Yep. Sorry, yep. yeah, it was That's the right. conch from the bedroom that yep. they took. Yep. Uh, she says, um, she says, now if one of you attune, if you find my father, or at his body, all of you must come back here. I will leave word if we have left. I will leave word with one of our guards to n- tell you where to find us. Otherwise, I will be here and we will start the assault together. <clears throat> I think that sounds like a good plan. And that is the plan then. She says, um, now, I am not an ungrateful queen. Come with me. And she, uh, she walks you back behind the throne. There's a corridor. She walks you into this room with these uh, shell, uh, these ch- shell treasure chests, and she starts pulling out different things. Um, she pulls out like these sacks made out of whale bladders and all sorts of different things. Basically, what you get is a treasure full of uh, ten thousand gold pieces, and then a couple magical items. Whoa. Figure out what we needed. I need a D100 from 56. 56. D6 is a potion of heroism. Another, please. 
82. Uh, a potion of longevity. 47. Uh, 47. So, what she what she gets is a um. She she like reaches around in in one of these treasure chests and she pulls out a book and the book has these uh, feathers on it and it's got like does anybody know celestial? Um. Maybe. <laughs> Can you can you comprehend languages by reading though, right? Yes, if I hold okay. the item. Oh no, okay. I don't know it. So if when when she pulls the book out, mm -hmm. she hands it to you. Um, just like unloading some of this stuff. She hands it to you and you uh you see the celestial writing and it starts bending and turning into what you can understand. It says the tome of the protected. If you remember, the protected is what the Vastani called Vaughn during his, his... Which happens to be a protector Asimon. Yes. But yeah, it has like all this angelic looking stuff on it. It's a leather bound with inlaid uh, gold leaf. And, and as like you try to open it too, it doesn't open. It doesn't have a binding or a, a clasp this to keep it broken. closed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kenyon, Kenyon tries it kind of like... You know, King Arthur and the sword, sword in the stone. Like you try to open it with all your strength, and it it doesn't open. And then Queen Sarissa, she says, "Now, where did you come from? Do you have your conch of teleportation? It should take you to the exact point in space that you were previous when you used it. Do you have it on you?" Unfortunately, none of us were attuned to it. She uh, she reaches back and like kind of throws her hand through her hair, uh, thinking. So, if because where are we? Have we been told? On Dothos. She she you ask that and she says, "You are thousands of feet below the surface of the trackless sea." So I wonder if like mist was or wind walking. We don't need to breathe when we're in the wind, but could we travel through water? I mean, you would be bubbles. Because then we could just, I mean, like, if we knew where we were, then we would know, like, approximately where Kenyon's ship is, and then we could just wind walk to it, potentially. Speed might be an issue there, dear, but I am no arcanist. I understand a little, but... Is there any way that you can teleport us to... There is a chance that our teleportation circle, seeing how nobody else has come through it, can go back to the conch that sent you here. Mm, okay. That would be perfect. It is, it's kind of like a redial effect, but... Star 69. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we can certainly give it a try. I just want you to know, though, if it doesn't work, you you may end up somewhere you don't want to be. Well, we've already rolled the dice of fate once today, so what's the second? Okay. We're willing to take that risk. It seems to be our best option. Okay. Uh, she walks you down to the original uh, welcoming room, the reception hall. She ushers you into this teleportation glyph uh, circle area. She says... Uh, I saw my mother do this only once. Let me see. And she walks over. <laughs> Cast guidance. Okay. Uh, what does that do? A d4? Yeah, d4. Okay. Uh, she walks over to the wall. And when she does, she puts her hand up to the wall. And this arcane, like, square, like, goes out and around her hand where she touches the wall. And it starts to glow. And she starts, like drawing symbols in the square and everything goes black. I need everybody to make a dexterity saving throw, please. You come to and the cold, the cold night air cuts against your skin and you fall, you plummet. Our ship's moved since we uh, teleported from it. 
you plummet. Where you plummet, though, is down towards a, a balloon, a great red balloon with ropes strewn across it. What did you have, Matt? Uh, 13. What did you have? 10. What did you have? 12. 12. You all fall, and you can't get a handhold on on this rope. Am I grappling hook, baby? You, yeah, you just... Okay, you you are falling, and you let go of your grappling hook, and it uh, it rubs against the balloon, trying to find purchase on one of these ropes, and and it does. It finds purchase, and you uh, you hold tight. Give me a strength saving throw, please. Nineteen on the die. Nice. You uh, you lot. hold tight, and you <laughs> swing in this parabolic form, grabbing at your friends. Two deck saves, uh, or dexterity checks. At 20, but I'd roll with advantage, so unless okay. we just take both of these. <laughs> no, nope, nope. so, so the first one, you you snap up Tenuvio uh, as you're swinging through. And 11. And you miss Minette <clears throat> on, on your pass through. Minette, you fall from the balloon down past the ship, and and you plummet through the sky. Got a grappling hook. Gold, gold <laughs> wings, gold wings come towards you. They are they are illuminating the fog that's around you, and you are swooped up by Bon as he has come from his night's flight. Perfect time. And uh, and puts you back on the ship, and and he says, "Well, uh, funny seeing you here." Hey everybody, uh, it's Alan, your DM, and uh, I wanted to say thank you from the cast and crew for listening to Roll With Advantage. We really appreciate it. If you feel like you want to support the podcast or um, uh, even want to get on the podcast in all sorts of different ways, go ahead and check us out at Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash roll with advantage uh we've got all sorts of different support structures uh that have got fun little things for each of the levels if you can't support monetarily comments and subscriptions go a very long ways so if you could comment in itunes or on youtube uh, that would help out the podcast so much we also love to interact with our fans uh, if you use the hashtag roll with advantage on twitter or you can post in our subreddit. We we will be happy to uh, to engage with you guys. Um, it's super fun way to get to know some of us, and uh, you get to ask questions about your favorite characters um, or about the world, uh, what's going on in the background, stuff like that. Um, we also want to say a big thank you for Incompetech.com and BattleBards for letting us use their music uh, and sound effects. They do a fantastic job, and I highly suggest you guys go check them out. Um, just beautiful work from everybody there. For a full list of the pieces we use, uh, go ahead and check out the description, and uh, you'll find it there. So, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye!